Welcome back to another hotel review. We've been traveling around a lot lately, and if we stay in a hotel for more than a few days, we want to give you an honest review about it. This episode is about our stay in the Radisson Blue Plaza Hotel in Oslo, Norway. The Radisson Blue is located directly in the center of town, right next to the train and bus station. This building has 37 floors and towers over the Oslo skyline. In addition to guest rooms, this hotel has a few restaurants and a conference center that can accommodate up to 1,100 people. Like we said before, the hotel is directly next to the Oslo bus station and the Oslo Central train station. You can easily take the walkway connecting all these buildings and get there within minutes. Before we get started, it is worth mentioning that we're not talking about the Radisson Blue Scandinavia Hotel, which is located right next to Frogner Park, also located in Oslo. We found the hotel lobby to be modern and elegant, and we were really appreciative of the number of staff here. There was a huge line in front of us when we got there, and they were able to take care of everyone within five minutes. There's plenty of seating in the lobby, and it's very comfortable if you have to wait here for anything. There's also a place where you can check your bags for the day, which we took full advantage of when we were walking around on our last day. There's also an express checkout available at this hotel where you can just drop your keys in a box. We wish more hotels would use this option. The hotel also has a fully stocked bar and restaurant on the main level. There's only a few choices for food here, but they make great cocktails. And we definitely took part in a nightcap here a few times. Another dining option is the restaurant on the second floor. This restaurant is split into two areas, one for dinner and one for breakfast. Breakfast was included with our room, but you can add it on and pay extra for it. The breakfast served here includes a wide variety of both hot and cold dishes. And it's all buffet style. It's comparable to what we've seen in other European hotel breakfasts. Traveling up to the 34th floor, you can also go to the top restaurant and bar. This restaurant and bar is supposed to feature nightly specials and great cocktails. However, the restaurant was closed when we were staying here. Traveling a bit further up the steps, you'll find yourself in the fitness and pool area. This hotel has a rather small pool and only a few beds, and there's nothing outdoors. However, you can get a great view of the harbor from this room. The pool also has a flow feature where you can swim against the current, making this small pool seem just a little bit bigger. Near the pool area are the men and women's saunas, as well as the fitness room. All of these are free to use for hotel guests. If you like what we're doing here, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us to grow our channel. Alright, so let's take a look at room 2509. Here is the room. As you can see, pretty good sized room, big bed, seating all around. As you can see, there's a spot for coats. Um, again, this is a really big room, a lot of room for storage. You can see here we have the big closet uh, with a safe, which is nice, and then of course an ironing board. That's one thing we didn't have in Flom that we really wanted was an ironing board, so we we're glad to have it here. And then right next to the closet is an area with a kettle and also a, an espresso machine, um, which we've had in all the hotels here, which have been really nice. And they also give you an assortment of teas and coffees. And then also you have the mini bar, which is stocked. Um, you do have to check the prices on those. Of course, the mini bar prices are expensive, so... Make sure you take a look at that menu. So turning the corner here, you can see we have the bathroom, which is actually really nice. Nicely finished, big shower, big tub. It does have the handheld shower, as well as the overhead shower. There is a large vanity area, which has been really nice. Whenever Catherine wanted to do her hair or anything, she had to do it using these power outlets right by the door, and then use this mirror. So that was one complaint we had, no power outlets in the bathroom. 
All right, so moving on to the rest of the room, you can see we have a large bed. Um, it is a queen bed. That's what most of the beds in this hotel are. And on either side of the bed, you do have outlets. On one side, you have USB ports and an outlet. And the other side, you just have an outlet. As is common with most European hotel rooms, you can control all of the lights with the switches next to the bed, which is nice. In this room, you do have a very large TV. It is not a smart TV, but you can cast from your phone. So you are able to watch things from your phone right on your TV, which effectively makes it a smart TV. And then you can see there's all sorts of seating here. There is the little couchette and the nice chair, as well as this little bench. The couchette does not fold into a bed, so keep that in mind if you're trying to fit more than two people in here. Um, there is not a third bed. And then, of course, we have the beautiful view out over Oslo. So this hotel faces out either towards the city or on the other side, it faces out towards the port. So you get great views either way. So another complaint we did have about this room, so there is a climate control system. Um, however, the air conditioning function does not actually really work. I mean, it's very poor air conditioning quality if it's working at all. Um, we're kind of in the middle of a heat wave here in Europe. Um, and so, I mean, you know, it's not terrible in Oslo, but it's getting up to 80 degrees each day. And if you're kind of aware of how European buildings are, they're not really air conditioned. So it's been very hot, very stagnant air. And you can even see, you know, we have it set to 19 degrees and it's been hovering around 24. Now it's almost up to 25 degrees. So... Um, you know this it really doesn't work. So if you are coming in summer Just be aware of that and you're gonna run into that issue basically everywhere you go every hotel We were at we were very warm One feature we found a little bit annoying about this hotel was that you have to actually lock your door from the outside when you leave Otherwise it will remain open. We found this feature in all of our hotels in Norway So now you're probably wondering how much we spent on this hotel room well, we did visit Norway in the middle of the summer, so tourism was booming and room prices were high. However, we thought that this hotel was actually quite affordable, at about 200 US dollars a night, or about 182 euros at the time. This rate included the breakfast. We actually booked this through Chase Travel with one of our travel cards, and we found about $50 per night in savings that way. Looking at the time of this recording, it looks like you can expect to pay about 300 US dollars during the summer, or about 140 US dollars in the late fall and winter. This is of course for a standard room without the breakfast. Breakfast usually adds about 15 US dollars per night. Overall, we thought this hotel was decent. The food options and quality were quite good, and the bed and room were very comfortable other than the heat issues, of course. Again, if Europe was not in the middle of a heat wave, this room probably would have been at a very nice temperature. As far as location goes, being next to the Oslo Central Station is great. However, it's quite a hike to walk to any of the other attractions in the city. The Opera House and Port are very close, but the Royal Palace is two kilometers away, and Frogner Park is four kilometers away. Walking distance, sure, but if we only have a couple days in the city, we don't want to spend all of our time walking. Luckily, there are tram and metro lines right next to the hotel, so we decided to just spend a few crowns and hop on those transportation options. Like we said before, there is another Radisson Blue next to Frogner Park, so that might be an option if you want to stay at the Radisson brand, but don't want to be far away from the action. If you make it to Oslo, Norway, the Radisson Blue Plaza Hotel is not a bad choice. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and join us for our weekly travel vlogs. We'll see you next time.